the, the first American woman to do a Hong Kong movie, and I didn't know that. When I went over there, I thought they were going to make me look like I was Asian. I thought I would have, because I saw the old Chinese movies, I thought I'd have long, black braids, you know, I thought I'd be swirling my head with the razor blades and, you know, I'd have the Chinese costumes on. They go, no, you're going to be a cop from England. And I was like, what? A cop from England, you know? And the, I think everybody was a little leery of me at first because they were like, oh, wow, here's this like five foot three petite woman coming in and fighting. And um, I think after the first night, they respected me because I tried hard. I did everything they said. I got hurt. I didn't cry, you know? And uh, I think that they started considering me as one of their own. They gave me a Chinese name, which was La Fu Lok, and I kind of fit in, you know, even though I was like an outsider coming in and I, I stayed in Hong Kong and did a lot of films there, uh, it, I think that I've earned the respect that, you know, that, that I wasn't what they thought, I, you know, that, I, oh, I broke a nail or something like that, that I really gave 110% in the fights. <laughs> After I did uh, Yes, Madam, uh, Golden Harvest signed me for three pictures. And I was supposed to do the one with Jackie Chan, Armor of God. And that's when he got hurt, and they postponed it. So they put me in Writing Wrongs instead of that. So that was actually that was my first film uh, for my contract with Golden Harvest. I was basically uh, uh, an agent that was after Yoon Bu. Uh, I was trying to abide by the law, and he was almost like a vigilante, and I was trying to catch him and uh, basically bring him to justice. And throughout the film, we were kind of like this, and we had a lot of fights together, and then in the end, we ended up uh, bonding. The interesting thing about uh, righting wrongs or above the law is they had an ending where I died, and there was an ending where Yoon Bu died, and where a couple other people died, and I died very grisly with like a... a stake through my throat, stuck up on the wall. <laughs> when Yoon Bu died, he fell off a helicopter and died. And, and they aired it, and people didn't like it. They were like, no, Cynthia can't die. We, no, she's not dead. So they called me back, and they reshot a different ending where we don't die. So you could see an ending where we live, or you could see an ending where we die. And it was interesting. It was all because of the, pe the appeal of the people. They kind of believed it, saying, no, we don't want our heroes to die. <laughs> Corey Yoon is, is a little different than Sammo. I think uh, I've worked previously on Yes, Madam for seven and a half months with Corey Yoon. And he would push me. He would push me to do bizarre things. You know, I remember, like, uh, he had me um, uh, in a film in a truck with my leg just stuck to the window and my head down at the wheel and dirt. Again, there's the dirt. They love that sand in your face, you know, and hanging. And I was like, oh my God. And the truck is driving fast. And I was like, I'm going to fall off here, you know? And it's like, can you strap my ankle at least on, you know? And it was like killing my leg. But it's like with Corey Yoon, he, he knew he could push me and and that's what he would do in, in, in like all the films. And same thing in, in writing wrongs. Like I remember like landing on a table and landing on my chest with, you know, not too many pads, like just bang, flat, or laying on my back, flat, you know, like those moves were kind of tough because I did come into the industry as a martial artist, not as a stunt person, so stunts were all new to me. I didn't learn that in my karate school, you know, and I think uh, he pulled the best out of me because he made me do things that if I said, oh, I, I don't think I could do that, he'd say, yeah, and he'd go here, stay here for two hours, like, and, and work on this. He was tougher with me because he, he, he could he could push me where Sammo, you know, knew what I could do, but he wasn't as, as tough as, as Yoon Kwe. With Yoon Bu, I wish I could have spoke English to him. At that point, uh, he didn't really know too much English, and we tried to do a lot of communication. I just, uh, I loved fighting with him. Like I said, he was like the best person I ever fought with. He just amazed me, and I remember he got hurt on that film. There's a scene where he jumps from a balcony down to the ground, and it's quite high. And basically what they did is they took the grass, and they picked it up, and they put a mat, just a thin little mat on it, and he jumped down, and I think he hurt his back. He was really hurt, but yet, you know, he got up and continued. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, people go, oh, I got to go to the doctor, and we can't finish shooting for the day. 
but uh, he he was just a amazing and he just had a nice smile. We, all, we did a lot of smiling at each other and you knew there was a mutual respect for the fighting styles but uh, we couldn't converse too much and I, I was kind of sad about that. I always wish that you know I could have got to know him a little bit better. It was a great team of Yoon Kui, uh, Mong Hoi and uh, Yoon Byu. Uh, they're all so creative and so talented and they would work together as a great team and they would they would put you know the fight scenes together they'd all put their input in uh, they you know they would include me and say what do you want to do what can you do and it's funny like with Yoon Kuei because Yoon Kuei he, he, he had a, a, a he didn't speak that much English but his voice was really strong and intimidating but he'd always go okay Cindy Okay, you know, and he'd always had this soft little voice when he talked to me, and uh, it was funny. I know when we were shooting a scene, right? I had to do the scene with Yoon Byu, and and Yoon Kui would try to speak English for me, and he'd go closer, you know, and I'd go closer, Cindy, closer, right? So it was literally like this close to Yoon Byu's face, like saying the line. I was going, oh, this is weird, and what he was saying was further, 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 and he had closer mixed up, but it was like. Who knew? You know, I was like this close away. Well, maybe that's Hong Kong filming. Maybe you know they really like you to talk that close to each other. <laughs> I knew Karen Shepard from competition. Uh, when I first came out, she was kind of she was still competing, and then she stopped. Uh, we weren't that great of friends at that time. We've become friends over the years. Uh, but I think what happened is, is Yoon Kui came to me and he gave me three names of people to do a whip with me, you know, and uh, I, I thought Karen was the best. I says, you know, I said, you know, let's, let's get Karen. And uh, she was great. I mean, she was really, you know, we, we, we got hurt, we bonded. Uh, one little funny story, though, is though, um, when Karen came on the set, uh, she uh, said, I can't be killed. You know, I can't be killed because it's not good for my career to be killed, right? And what Yoon Kui did is he said, okay, you're not going to get killed. And he said, all right. They pretend they were filming the camera, and they had Karen run off, and then Karen left, and then they got the stunt guy dressed as her and had me stab her and falls. She falls over the balcony and gets killed. And I always wondered, oh, what would Karen think when she saw that, you know? Because... The, you know, and I, I think what happened is that Karen actually loved it because the scene between us, I actually think this is the best scene of two women fighting together in history. It's the best I've ever seen anyway. You know, that she had to be blown away and go, oh, wow, that was good. But I was always kind of scared because I knew that they were, they did that little, that little, uh, that thing pretending that they were shooting the footage. <laughs> scene with Yoon Byu in the apartment was very complicated. It was very tricky. Uh, at that point, my knee was still bothering me from the last one because I went on that right after Millionaire's Express. So I had to change my whole kicking routine to my left side. A lot of times when you're a martial artist, you're dominant on one side and on the other. So it, w it, was, uh, it was a test for me to really, you know, up my skills. But we did crazy moves. I remember like, you know, doing aerials and flips and one move that I was like blown away and I was sitting there like, oh, at Yoon Byu is he did a flip and he landed on a rocking chair just on these little, little ledges and, and he missed, he missed, he missed about probably 30, 40 times, you know, and then he finally got it where he landed on it and I was like, wow, that was, that was pretty intense and just, uh, you know, going up off the walls and jumping and stuff, it, it was, uh, it took us a long time, I don't remember how long to shoot that scene, but uh, again, brilliant choreography from Hong Kong. The scene in the airport hangar, I think we might have shot that uh, for about a month. And uh, it, it was like every, when we do these fight scenes, it's, it's kind of hard on your body because you're doing fights every single day for a month. You might have like one day off and we're not talking like 12 hours, we're talking as long as it takes to get the scene. And I remember when I used to wake up and go, oh, no fighting today. Oh, good, my body, you know, could, could recover because even though you, you know, you have certain pads on, you still get hit in all different areas and, and things. And um, that, that, it was a great scene, I loved it. It was just very, very strong and very, uh, very intense scene.
there was a scene where we're in the ending and someone comes with a chain and they put it around my neck. Well, they came and they did it really hard and hit me right in the nose. Now I'm trying to be the tough person here. I'm trying to hang with the stunt people. I see all these tough guys and the tears are just like rolling out of my eyes because it hurt, you know, when someone hits you in the nose. And uh, Yun Kui was directing it and he'd come up and he looks at my nose, right? It's all swollen and red and he goes, it looks better that way. <laughs> When I did Writing Wrongs, uh, I, it was a very hard film. Well, they were all hard films for me to do. And it's funny because I'd always go, oh, I, I, I don't think I could do another film. I think this is it because I'm going to die on the next film, you know? And I'd get up and I couldn't walk or I, you know, my leg would be swollen, you know, from getting hit. Uh, and I, you know, sometimes like it's just like, oh, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm so hurt. I, I don't know if I could do this. And then, Writing Wrongs is done, and we go, they had midnight shows where you'd see it, like a premiere. And you know, you'd, you'd be amazed. I'd be amazed. I'd be like, is that really me up there doing that action? Like I was seeing someone else, you know? And, and I'd go, I can't wait to do the next film. I have to do the, you know, I can't wait, and it's going to be better, you know? And I guess I, I think, you know, that's how it is, is like you just see those films in the end. Even today, I get blown away when I see them. You know, it's like I'm watching them for the first time because it's almost like I've had stunt people say, you couldn't do that. You physically couldn't do that. And I'm like, yeah, I did. You know, and or, how did you do this? And it's just, uh, it's just wonderful experiences. And, and the funny thing is, even now, I'd like to go back and do one. I'd like to, you know, get in there and do that again because uh, I haven't really done that kind of fighting since I've done my Hong Kong films. And, and to me, that shows the best work I could do.